Greetings, Epic Adventure Seekers. I'm Allie Bierman, and you're joining us here today for Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and Mind. Today's guest, Bupinder Bansal, is a unique blend of spirituality and leadership, and just from all the different worlds that he combines into one. And we're going to go there so you can understand what I just said. Before I jump in, I have a quick question for you. Do you wish and hope that your world's going to look different every day? Have you tried using affirmations and they just don't seem to work for you? I created a quick guide to get you started with what actually does work for affirmations? Because there's a way you need to say them so they get in your subconscious mind. Your conscious mind doesn't create your world. There'll be a link in the show notes where you can download your free copy. Bupinder was born in India, where he earned a degree in engineering and business, and he migrated to Canada in 1993. And he has an interesting evolution of where he started and where he became. And what was really striking to me was how he was saying he sometimes tunes into people. And then later when he meets them, he discovers what he was tuning into was part of their world, which is something I do. It's called being multidimensional. So already you're getting a picture of how he is different from all of us. He's also an avid cyclist. There's so much that's so special. I'm so very excited to have you here today. And I just want to get right in to talking with you. So welcome, welcome, welcome to our show. Thank you, Ali, for that uh, nice introduction. And I'm really honored to be part of this show. And my intent here is to share, um, I call it experiential wisdom, based on my own inner personal journey. And hopefully this would inspire someone who's looking for, let's call that eternal happiness and how to sustain it for the long term and isn't that what we all seeking directly or indirectly to be peace, to be that joy in face of adversity and all the ups and downs of life? And I first met you uh, in the wisdom app and you just have so very much wisdom and you were telling me about your book, The Tree of Life and so many cultures have a tree of life and yours is quite unique. And for me, it's really powerful. Would you please share what your tree of life is? Absolutely. Um, so I, I will just mention that I'm currently working on a book and the whole book revolves around the central idea of the tree of life. And you can imagine a, a tree and the crown of the tree, the leaves and the fruits, let's call it the wealth wellness. All formal educations, all successes that we strive for are tied into this crown of the tree. But remember, it is a tree. The crown is not the tree. Money, assets is not life. That's what I'm saying. It's a part of the life. And for a crown to be healthy, the branches to which the leaves, the fruits, everything are tied needs to be healthy. So those branches represent physical wellness. So if I am not taking care of my own physical body, by feeding it uh, right foods filled with nourishment, then 
it's like I'm not taking care of my car. It'll be broken too often. It'll end up in the mechanic's, mechanic's garage. And then this car, this body will not serve me. It is very important, no matter if you're in the corporate world, if you're in the spiritual world, or if you're just having fun. And then these branches are attached to a trunk. And if the trunk is not healthy, and let's call the trunk, or the trunk represents mental wealth, I call it, not even wellness, it's a wealth. And if the trunk is not robust, then in face of adversities, we shake. And our prayers turns into changing the world outside of us. And I can say from my own experience, when I pray for people to change, when I pray for situations to change, it does not work all the time. And that's where the part of the tree, which is below the ground, called the roots, it represents our spiritual wealth. And if a tree does not know that it has roots also, how can we expect the tree to stand in face of storms of life, changes that happen? And there is a beauty about the roots. The roots are not impacted by the change in weather conditions or the seasons. The part of the tree above the ground, which is our physical world, the mind and the body, they are impacted. They fluctuate. They are bound to fluctuate. But a tree that's not aware of its roots, of its ascents, a person who's not aware of their own roots, of their own ascents, of their true authentic self, is bound to shake. For them, happiness is impermanent, so is pain. Seasonal. It changes with the outside world. So for me, I am the tree of life. And I need to invest in my own roots. If I don't invest in my own roots, I've seen in the corporate world or even in the healthcare industry, people around, well, around 40s or 50, what we call the burnout phenomenon is happening because when we don't nourish our own roots, this tree falls before its time. So that's a sense of the book. There are actually seven different principles that I will be introducing in this book. And the title of the book at this time, it could change, is called Prosperity Focused Life. Instead of success or anything else, let's redefine what is success and let's lead all of us a prosperous life. That's such a complete picture. And I'm listening to you and I'm thinking about these world-class athletes and they have these brilliant careers and they're taking care of the physical body and they tend not to live very long. They tend not to be very healthy because they're yeah. ignoring all the other aspects that you were saying. And also I... I love nature and where I live, there are woods around my house. So I get to see, we had a really rough winter last year for four months. There was snow and ice on the ground. And I was watching, uh, I study a lot about plants and trees and their fortitude. And they were encased in ice for days at a time. And I wondered how many of them are going to make it through the springtime. All of them, all of them came back. Mm -hmm. And that's because of everything you were saying about their roots. And you can see the roots going out everywhere and going deep down. And I talk about roots in the tree 
with the roots being fed by your early caretakers. And that's what goes and that messes up your head. And you're talking about as a spirituality. And I strongly believe because I discovered if you don't have what you were just saying, that spiritual aspect to your life, something's missing and things just don't work right. So I have a friend who owned many businesses and people would come to her and she was basically a ministry. And what you were describing just now, you're like a minister in the world without using those terms because I, I know that can turn people off. So you show up for me, you show up just being you and who you are, your energy, your choice of words speaks so loudly, even if you don't speak, your message is coming across. Does that make any sense to you? Yes, it does. And the truth is I'm not telling anyone anything new. This is what we all are. And let me, uh, shed some light on that. For me, spirituality or discovering my roots is simply two things. What is my essence? Means my true self. Second, what is the true nature of my existence? Am I a mortal being? Or am I not? Because Every word, when we say spiritual, it has different meaning for different people. Mm -hmm. For me, being in this physical body has one supreme purpose, to become who I am. So I won't, uh, I can speak at length about it, but I will try to keep it short. The true nature of our existence is beyond time and beyond space. Let's call that awareness. So if you were to really ask me, who are you? I will say, I am awareness, but I have manifested myself in the time and space dimension as this mind and as this physical body. My mind and my physical body are from me. They're like my shadow. I need it to operate in this world, to have this conversation. So my mind and my body are my manifestations. They are for me, from me, but not me. So someone could disagree with these words but it should not offend me if I remain rooted in myself. The true nature of existence of all beings is the same. But we have manifested ourselves. People talk, talk about manifesting law of attraction. I always ask, does the manifester, the mind know whose manifestation it is? And the one, the real manifester, the awareness, is always complete, it's always whole, it means it's desireless. And once we are spiritual, once we find our roots and we know true nature of our existence, then these two instruments called the mind and the body, they become the mean to serve one community called humanity. So that I'm just defining what are the roots, what is the essence, and this is what spirituality for me is. So it, it doesn't matter which walk of life you are from, the essence is same, just your manifestation. If it is different from me, you might think we are different, but I don't think so. That's so perfect. I, I've been 
teaching that for a while now. And I think the people I was talking to, it was too esoteric for them. So thank you so much for sharing the way you did. And I'm looking forward to your book. So wait very patiently and be sure everybody knows when you're ready to release it. Absolutely. And in fact, there's a whole chapter on this um, spiritual aspect in the book. It's called, I am connected always. <laughs> so more to come. Yeah, that's, uh, it's interesting that the fact that there's only one energy and everything in the cosmos is that one energy. And I'm in a class that's very, I think it's for very left brain people, but the person teaching it is, he speaks the left brain language, so people listen to him, but he just expressed how we're all the same energy in our last class. And I didn't see anybody making faces. And I thought, mm -hmm. wow, <laughs> the message is getting out there. And it's true that with the next generations, with each succeeding generation, more and more people are, I like to use the word awakening, and if there's a better word, but since it, you shared so beautifully and deeply uh, about what your book and your philosophy of life is, I'm wondering, would you share one of your poems with us, please? Yeah, I can uh, share a poem, and before I share the poem, I really want to give a little background here. Okay. Um, I didn't choose to write poetry. I didn't choose to be an author. Let's call it, these are the spontaneous fruits on my inner journey. And poetry for me is more of a way to document my inner journey and each word is like a footstep. And sometimes I stumble across some old poems, which happened last week, a poem from 10 years back popped up in my Facebook feed. Cool. Then I can see the path I, I traversed on. And I share these footsteps in form of prose and poetry for two reasons. It keeps me steadfast on my journey. Secondly, I don't use the word help. It could inspire someone who might be thinking that am I on the right path or not? And I will say when this path chose me, I was very afraid to share some of my writings. I'm like, what has happened to you, Bupinder? Wow. Now, I have no reluctance. I'm rooted in this truth. And hopefully this poem will inspire the listeners on their journey. So the poem goes, crying in joy, I shed all my pain. Crying in joy, I shed all my pain. My soul melted away, getting lighter each moment. By losing myself, I have found me. Means I was attached to this body, to this mind. I lost both. Means I became detached and have found me. Means the true nature of my existence. By burning my house of desires, I lit up the sky of love. By burning my house of desires, I lit up the sky of love. Through the door of courage, I walked compassionately as words of compassion flow gently from my soul. My head is resting again as sorrow has escaped because of our pain and suffering is because of our attachment to the impermanent dimension of our existence, AKA mind and the physical body. It's not the outside world, 
we have to fully and truly understand who we are. And we don't have to go read a book to understand this. This phenomenon is happening with every being, all the 8 billion people, irrespective of what their faith is. This is beyond faith. This is beyond any boundaries that we might have drawn based on our color, on ethnicity, nationality. This is beyond all the fragmentations that the mind has created. And that's the beauty of being spiritual. So from the thick fog of past memories, releasing the long draught of happiness in pool of emotions, fearless and walking naked. Naked means awareness, totally detached, totally stable, peace. The layers are all these emotions, feelings, they are there but I don't identify myself with these thoughts. It's like an actor on a stage. It's an actor on the stage. If he's acting today, say as a uh, beggar, he, goes, he still goes home. He doesn't stay on the streets. He knows who he, who he is. So we, or at least I will speak for myself, I have these different expressions. I'm a father, I'm a poet, I'm an author, I'm an employee, I'm a spouse, so on and so on, but I'm none of these. I was there before I became a father. I was there before I became a spouse. And if we expand this, I was there before this physical body was there. I will be there when this physical body will not be there. It's like that layer, oh, sorry, the wave on the ocean surface. The water is there before the, before the wave is formed. The water remains after the wave drops into the ocean. Our true ascents. So let me finish this poem. Fearless, I'm walking naked. Let us all dare to walk naked. Now this is a call for action. Let us all dare to walk naked as one, shedding all masks of self-destruction by cultivating beauty within to savor the sweetness of bliss. And that's the end of the poem. That's very beautiful, and it's so deep. And I got to tell you, I'm a big fan of Deepak Chopra, and it's, <laughs> I feel like I'm listening to Deepak Chopra explaining his view of life. So that's, it, it really touched me. Thank you so much for sharing that. When did you write that? This was actually written in 2012. <laughs> Okay. And I stumble across um, again. And I missed three lines. They are important. Let me quickly share those too. Okay. Let us see love through the eyes of our soul. Let us see love through the eyes of our soul beyond these walls of separated thoughts. So this is what it means. When we are looking at the world, you know how we talk about this meditation about witnessing? Witnessing what? Witnessing the thoughts. And I'm what really saying here is, can the witness witness itself? Can the witness know it is the witness? Can the consciousness know it is consciousness? Where we fall short is we as consciousness are conscious of everything, except that we are consciousness. Mm. Let me repeat that. 
We are still mindful, being conscious, being aware. The question is of what? Of everything. But what about being conscious that I'm consciousness? So the one who's looking through the mind, who is that? And the walls of separation, we are looking at this wall through our memory, through the mind. It is white snow. Bhupender is wearing red glasses. Ali is wearing green glasses. That color is we are standing behind the mind, the witness. Can this witness take off these glasses? That is seeing the world through the eyes of the soul without any of the past being here now. I love that. I've never thought about that before. I might steal that from you. That's beautiful. And it's so clear. It's easy to understand. Yes. And, and uh, uh, you mentioned earlier, I'm trained engineer. I was trained to use the left side of my brain. I did very well. When poetry happened, it was like visualization using metaphors to explain what is beyond the grasp of the mind, left side of the brain. I believe in metaphors. Now you're bringing something that's truly abstract. And I know I will still fail. The reason I say that is if I was, had gone to a garden and smelled a rose on this nice rose bush and I come here, and I start telling the audience through the words, start talking about the fragrance. Will any of the audiences who are listening get the fragrance? No, I cannot bring that fragrance here. But it might become inspire someone. Oh, Bhupendra was describing so joyfully that fragrance. Maybe it's time for me to go to that garden. The garden is our true self. I can't really wait for your book. It's, I, I love the way you express everything. And it's amazing because you use metaphors that I haven't or haven't read elsewhere because all these people who teach something similar, you say it differently. So an audience that hasn't responded to them yet, they're waiting for you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm here, honestly, to, to share this fragrance. Let's call it that. Uh, I love call that. it wisdom. And I truly believe each one of us have this ocean of wisdom within us. So I'm saying we don't have to follow anyone but we can get inspired by someone because we each again another metaphor you're going to love this one there is one sun and then there are millions or billion rays of light and all of them are always attached to the sun never separated me and you are two rays of light and if I'm looking for light, I'm looking for the light means that happiness outside of me, I'm not going to find it. Can Ali give that light to Bhupender? No, Bhupender already has it, but Ali can say where to go, find it. This is the way I see it. Wisdom cannot be given to anyone because everyone here has the wisdom. But they've been told, you have to find that from a book. You have to find that from that person. No, they're all telling you, look within yourself. In fact, that light itself is the sun. 
So how you can be separated from the source? You might try, but you cannot. You will cease to exist the moment you, as a ray of light, think the sun is somewhere else. I'm here. One sun. We are all rays of light from that sun. The only difference is most of these rays of light are looking outward, means what is being illuminated in their light, they become attached to it. That's another brilliant one. It's just, <laughs> wow. Oh, I've, I'm going to have to have you back again because there's so much more I want to talk about with you. So, Anytime. Okay, we will definitely schedule. And you won't be moving, so it won't be four months before we get no. the calendar again. Wow. Yeah, there's definitely a whole lot more I want to share with you. Would you please leave? Is there one message? So you said so very much today. Is there one thought that you want to leave with everyone today? Yeah, what I will say is let's collectively rise together. What that means is let's start nourishing our own roots. And once we start doing that, we will find there's so many other people who either want to do this or they think they are doing something abnormal. And second part, remember that the part of the tree above the ground, the material world can never be separated from the roots, from spirituality. They're one and the same. If you think you won't be good enough for this physical world. You are mistaken. You have not fully experimented with it. So finding who you are is greater challenge than any challenge you might have taken so far. And I believe each one of the people out there, and I'm always open to if someone has any questions or they just want to sit down and have a talk with me. And what would be the best way for people to reach you? Uh, you can, uh, they can reach me at my uh, Gmail. And from there, um, I can even provide, set up a meeting to uh, provide, let's call it guidance in any aspect of their life, especially spirituality. Okay. That's a very profound and priceless gift everybody so i will put that information in our show notes you know, definitely want to get you back on the show and i thank you thank you thank you for thank being you. you i thank you for being you in the world because who you are just matters more than anything else out there Remind everybody here to check the show notes. Well, this will all be in the show notes so that you can get your download of affirmations that actually work. And also join our Facebook group, ask questions. Please tell me where you're listening from. I looked the other day and the list was like 30 different countries around the world. So let us know who you are, where you're listening from. And what you want to know more about, I'm definitely going to schedule for Bupinda to come back with us because there's a whole lot more that I want to know about him and the way he's living and impacting the world. And the most important of all, enjoy, capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment because nothing happens out there. You don't see out there, it's in here. You don't hear, taste, touch, sense, smell out there. And I look forward to being here with you next time. <laughs>